people are scared of just putting themselves out there and having the conversations yeah. and doing the ex exchange of value, which is selling at the end of the day, right? Hey, I'm going, I'm giving you something so valuable that is going to help you solve your problem. Therefore, you're going to give me money, right? This is a phrase I love. Where, what's the fastest path to cash, right? So if we have to like set up a funnel and the messaging and trying to figure out what we're going to sell and do the video sales letter drive and do the, the sales traffic. letter, drive the traffic, figure out the traffic, pay for the traffic, right? With what money uh, do we stop eating? Like what? what's the thing? Uh, but with that said, Fonzie, I think we have a, a fun topic today. Uh, we just came up with it. It, it felt right, right? It felt right? It felt, it felt, it felt. <laughs> it felt yeah. right. It, 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 it fell by inspiration. Actually, I know. Some of the, one of the inspiration. <laughs> through one of the conversations that we recently had. That's why you need to have conversations because they spark That's topics. Right. That's right. Okay, they, are you ready? We've got hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit before. podcast. Two, where we talk about three, entrepreneurship, three, mindset, and of course, how to turn your content into profit. But most importantly, we're here to have a good time with you. That's right. Ooh, so go to contentisprofit.com yeah. and join the community, the publishing content club. Hey! That, that publishing content <laughs> club still doesn't exist. Uh, so just go join the Content is Profit community. <laughs> That's right. You, you almost get that part. I know. I almost uh, didn't I, notice. I, I caught it. I almost didn't notice, but like my spidey senses were tingling and they were like, something's wrong. <laughs> we, missed, we missed something. Fancy controversial topic today. Controversial topic. We are going to be talking all about what they don't tell you in Ooh. funnel land. Ooh. Wee. <laughs> no, no, please stop. <laughs> Anyways, what they don't tell you in funnel land. Uh, uh, full disclosure, we do love funnel land. Yeah, it's a, it's a very happy place. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, we recommend it still. It's part of the education, but, but for newcomers, but. for newcomers, when they go there, you get so involved and your belief that you can make money with very little work just goes through the roof. What is that? Hold on. What, yeah, what? no, we're going to add more context to this. Okay. I'm just like putting kind of like a, a warning up there. Okay. Just like a, a sign. A sign. Okay. Right? Okay. Which, again, funnels, they do work. But the secret they don't tell you, which we're going to be talking all about today, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to rhyme something, but yeah, the rap game is not my, my strength. Um, it's very important to understand that, yes, those things can be done, but don't believe that it's the only way. Because honestly, that is more kind of like a side destination to the journey. But what you need to be doing is actually not talked as much in Funnel Land. Or it is talked, but it is kind of like big no-no. People are like, no, don't do that. Mar that marketing much. move. Very smart marketing it's, it's move. It's a marketing move. From at the, end of the, the Funnel Land kings. Yeah, I Wait. agree. It's like a positioning type of thing. Yeah, I like it. So let's talk about it. Yeah. First of all. What's Funnel Land? What is Funnel Land, right? Let's start with that. Um, and we're going to try to do this without dropping any names because <laughs> personally... We don't believe in, you know, talking bad about other people and whatnot. And first of all, we're not talking bad about anybody here. No. We're just kind of, we're just stating our beliefs and our thought process and epiphanies that we've had along the journey. Yes. But we don't want to do any bad to any of the, you know, communities involved in here. That being said, why why don't we want to do that? Because we've had a wonderful uh, yeah, run we, over the last years with people we, in Funnel Land. We actually owe a lot to Funnel Land. Yeah. Uh, we've learned so much and we still and we love will, going to those events. They're and, amazing. And we will use a lot of funnels. Exactly. By the way, by the way, we have a funnel. It's just not on, not on the page. But anyways, we'll get into that in a bit. Okay. Exactly. So what is Funnel Land, right? A lot of new marketers or business owners, entrepreneurs, when they're coming into the entrepreneurial world, trying to sell their service or products, they discover Funnel Land. They come across companies, uh, coaches, people that are pitching you the idea of selling your services and products in a very passive way. Meaning you build your funnel, you start driving traffic there, and then the funnel does the selling for you. And then it becomes an evergreen machine of cash, right? So the idea is beautiful because a lot of people are like, oh, cool. Wow, I can make money sitting in my couch eating potato chips. Guilty. That was me, right? <laughs> and yeah. at the end of the day, you need to put in the work. Even to build the funnels in Funnel Land, yes, you need to put in the work. There's a lot of skills that are needed 
to kind of like build these funnels in a good way that they convert. But at the at the end of the day, what is talked kind of like down upon is a little bit of the outbound world and the outbound world of sales. Before right? we, yeah, before we go there, also. Um, Funnel is a very powerful tool, clearly. Yeah. Also, it depends on what, what type of business you have. What thing do you sell? How do you sell it? Do you have your messaging right? Do you don't have your messaging right? Like, we came into Funnel Land uh, where we had nothing. Like, we came in literally with um, yeah. pen and paper. That's I, it. I think we can add some context to all this through our story. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of how we found we were trying to start a business, right? And uh, when you start a business, there's many, many pieces that you have to put in place. Uh, to grab traction, right? Depending on what you do, what you sell, whether that's a service, that if you go info product, if you do affiliate marketing, there's obviously different things that you can do. So we started mm -hmm. selling a product. Uh, the first thing that we set up was uh, a Shopify store with the stickers and, and uh, Six of Southern, right? Actually, I don't know if you remember this. We had one called B Wealthy, B but, but it was with the B yeah. E Wealthy. So it was kind of like a game of words. The logo was a little B, but it was actually, it actually meant like B he has the internet I know. wealthy and I, I thought it was pretty cool and the idea was to we actually sold that domain for, yeah we sold that domain for, for like money. for like 200 bucks <laughs> some money i mean it was pretty good right <laughs> we bought it for like 10 but the thing is could flip that maybe that's a business we need like domain flipping the whole uh, maybe new new venture right <laughs> new here event. live in content is profit <laughs> yeah the thing is with be wealthy it was all funnel land dreaming it was like oh yeah let's get a bunch of ebooks let's build a bunch of ebooks on how billionaires and multimillionaires made their money and we're gonna sell them for five bucks and that is that thought process that 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 yeah. you start getting through funnel land which is it is really oh, attractive let me sell this small size products at a huge volume while i sit down in my couch first of all how are you going to get the traffic to sell yeah. five dollars of ebooks right at that volume if getting, you don't have like resources getting, to drive traffic and stuff like that, for getting example. a five dollar ebook about traffic, clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so that was the rabbit hole that we kind of went into, right? And extremely grateful for for the journey, right? We, because we did learn a lot. We 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 did learn a lot. We're still learning a lot, right? Yeah. But um, for us, our situation was that we needed to sell a service, right? And we needed to sell a service at a price point that it could work for us. And that would allow us to eat. Allow us to eat, yeah. So uh, through our funnel was really challenging. Also to add to the equation, we didn't really know what we wanted to sell. That was the other thing. Like we tested so many things, right? Uh, from the service, we're trying to discover who do we want to serve. And uh, you know, one of those things when you go into these courses or masterminds or different things, most likely they're going to ask you, who's your dream client? Who do you want to help? Who's that person? Picture in your head, like we work to, you know, right now we're working with a with a coach, right? That he every almost every single Monday he shows us a picture of like his dream client, right? He yeah. has which, a, which I'm gonna say, <laughs> it, it really looks like him like and him. his family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is literally. <laughs> yeah, like you see the picture and you see a picture of him in real life and with his family, and you're like. Dude, are, are you your dream customer? <laughs> no, <laughs> but I mean, funny. but to his point, once he did that exercise, right? Like he, yeah. it's funny because like he makes it so so much so so easy to communicate and to share your message and to Absolutely. share the problems and to share the solutions and so on. And uh, I think for us has been really challenging at the very beginning that exercise because we didn't really know what was a problem also that we were trying to solve like there was just so much. Yeah. So or, or dream client was somebody that had money. That's it. That, that was the only <laughs> qualifier. Much. The only qualifier is. He's able to purchase whatever we're going to sell because we don't even have something to sell. Yeah. And at the time, right, we were experimenting with the things that, that we wanted to do. And a very quick way that we learned was, this is a phrase I love, what's the fastest path to cash, right? So if we have to like set up a funnel and the messaging and trying to figure out what we're going to sell and do the video sales letter drive and do the, the sales traffic. letter, drive the traffic, figure out the traffic, pay for the traffic, right? With what money uh, do we stop eating? Like, what, what's the thing? Like, it, it just feels and, and seemed like a very uh, big journey. And uh, it was really challenging, yeah. right? Because you start thinking about that and then you don't execute because of the overwhelm. Now you have a to-do list of like a hundred items. And this is actually a phrase that we learned from somebody in Funnelland that we love a lot. And I remember he said, for every solution that there is, you open a door to a whole bunch of other problems. And that was literally the experience in Funnelland, right? When we got introduced to the idea of potentially having a funnel that would give you, you know, evergreen cash, 
it opened a door to a whole new problem. It's like, okay, what do I write in my funnel? What do I, how do I record a VSL? What is even copywriting? I had no idea what copywriting is, right? How do I solve all these technical issues? How do I automate my funnel with my backend? All these things. And that becomes a huge, massive problem yeah. that at the end of the day, it's a big roadblock between you and profit. Yeah. So keep in mind, again, we're we're starting a business, right? Yeah. Uh, and we were very excited. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, and, and this is what we've seen. A lot of people are coming to that world. They get very excited. And and I think that, that excitement also helps in many ways, right? Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, we've seen both sides where it's very positive environment where a lot of people help each other out, but we've also seen the negative environment where, you know, somebody can be like one or two steps above and they're trying to sell you, but they don't, they don't really know what the next three steps are going to be that you're also going to face. Um, and it's like this crazy loop of, of things. And so we've seen both sides and, uh, we rather stay with the positive sides, right? Yeah. But here, here's the deal. At the end of the day, when we decided to do Beast Rose full time, uh, with content momentum and the service that we offer. We had to sit down and really see, okay, well, now we had some kind of traction with a type of product that, and a service that we actually enjoy doing, right? Because we went through like probably five or six different things that we did that we didn't really enjoy, added friction. We had to learn a ton, right? Um, and we couldn't execute. Maybe we didn't, we weren't getting the best results. We couldn't like specialize in the thing or the experience on how can we make this experience better for us, for the clients, right? For the people that we serve. So once we decided on that thing, then going back to the question, who do we serve? What's the problem that we solve? What's the thing uh, became a lot easier. And even then we had to continue to optimize who that person was. You know, you go back to 2021, it was a crappy year, man. Like that sucked. And uh, you know, we're still here. The team's still here. We're making more progress. And I, I heard this phrase. Um, I think it was Steve Harvey that said it. Um, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep going. Why would you want to, you know, stay in hell? <laughs> that's a good point. And uh, and I think like through last year, that's exactly what what happened, right? Uh, maybe we've should have moved a little bit faster, <laughs> but uh, but with that, that's part of the journey of trying to find that out. Add to that experience, figure out the funnel and the message. I think just becomes like super su super overwhelming, right? So um, when Fonzi shared a story, maybe we don't share the num the names. Yeah. Um, but he shared this the other day and I'm like, yeah, like that goes hand in hand with how we finally were able to grab a ton of traction, uh, which is the fastest path to cash. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of beliefs and grain in there once you go into the world of funnels and you see what is possible because it is possible. But let's be honest, a very small percentage of people actually are the ones that are fueling that dreams for everybody else. Right. When you see that, you get excited, you get motivated, you're, you become passionate about, yes, let me quit my nine to five and, and, you know, start selling my hobby, for example. And at the end of the day, it's a very long, very long, challenging journey. Right. And something that we kind of like had to change our mindset about was about sales, because in that world, kind of like sales is a bit spoken down to kind of there you know you don't need to be salesy to sell your product right that's kind of part of the me of the message right in general is you don't need to uh, be calling people to sell your product right you don't need to be all sketchy to sell your product and yes you don't need to be sketchy to sell your product but guess what you do need to be proactive to sell your product and personally i feel that the funnel land message is very reactive in a sense right i i, I don't think the funnel message is is doing I it think i it's think it's the belief of the people that are using funnels to sell Be that, because, that's the cause and i think it's because they are and i'm not i'm not gonna say they are this is what i believe very personal um people are scared of just putting themselves out there and having the conversations yeah. and doing the ex exchange of value which is selling at the end of the day, right? Hey, I'm going. I'm giving you something so valuable that is going to help you solve your problem. Therefore, you're going to give me money, right? And they, we don't see this just in products, right? Like um, last week, I had a couple of conversations, and uh, one one of the most popular questions that we get is like, how do you how do you get people on your show? Like, how do you? At the end of the day, you're selling your show, right? Like to mm -hmm. to to have these incredible people come in and and have an awesome conversation, <clears throat> and uh, 
I don't think people were happy with my answer <laughs> when I told them, right? Um, spoiler alert, here's the answer. You ask them. <laughs> you send them a quick DM, maybe with a video, maybe with a message, right? Whatever feels more, more comfortable to you, and you ask them, do you want to come to the show? Here's what we have to offer. And um, I think coming from that world, because there's so many steps, like the funnel, the for, the bump offers, and the down sales, and the up sales, and all these things, a lot of people kind of expect many steps in this thing, right? And uh, at the end of the day, it's like, how can we keep it simple, stupid, right? It's like, okay, maybe it's, it's one or two steps. And we just had an experience with um, an incredible company that we're helping in a different aspect in, in product management and, and other things. And uh, we got a message from the CEO and uh, along the ways of, I think internally with the company, they handle the, the content process internally. I think we're overthinking this thing. <laughs> big time can we have a conversation and see how we can do it because we solved an issue uh internally very quickly and and in that sense obviously in content it helps a ton but also mm -hmm. when you transfer that to set the sales environment and that principle of how can i actually have a conversation a meaningful conversation with somebody i think what you said is so true that people are very scared to have those conversations yeah i think we are uh and we were there yeah absolutely I think we're like mixing this a lot. I think we got to, the, the whole topic, I feel like we're jumping from one side to the other one. Bring, I'm, it, bring I'm, it down. I'm, I'm going to share the story that my friend told me. Yes. Right. It, more than a story, it's just pretty much a comment. So my friend, really good friend, we actually met in Funnelland and he is really good friends with a eight figure entrepreneur, mm -hmm. very successful from Funnelland who is a very good friend with a nine figure entrepreneur <laughs> that is very recognized in funnel land, but I wouldn't say he is as involved in that. Right. Yeah. And recently he, that guy has exploded. It's absolutely amazing. So he told me that the secret that the nine figure guy said, the secret to go beyond, you know, not to scale to nine figures is outbound sales. And that makes way. He dun, said, dun, dun. he said <laughs> that yeah, funnels and everything they're very cool, but they're only gonna get you to you know a certain point. A certain point. Yeah. But what is actually going to explode your business is doing outbound sales. For those that don't know what outbound sales is, you're not waiting for a lead to come in to contact them. You go out there proactively searching for those people that fit the profile of your ideal customer yeah. and then you reach out to them you're not going to reach out hey what's up dude i have a five thousand dollar program i want to sell you of course not right you're gonna reach yeah. out build a relationship see if you actually can help them and then that might lead to an opportunity but outbound you do a lot of volume right all these people do hundreds of outreach per day and let's go off of funnel numbers right let's say out of the 100 people that you reach out to, 20% uh, opt-in, right? Which is kind of like a average, I would say, opt-in number in a landing page. 20% of the people that you commu communicate with answer to you. And then out of those, 5% decide to actually buy something on your sales page, right? An offer that you made them. Out of 100 people that you're reaching out to, five people are giving you money. I think that is a pretty good win, right? And once they give you that first dollar, then it is way easier for you to upsell them, right? Sell them the next thing. Or if they are a good fit, obviously, you know, bring them to a certain program that you have or a certain service, whatever it is. Yeah. Now, I think I got to clarify this. I think we're speaking more in terms of service providers yeah. too, right? Like you're not going to, if you're selling uh, water guns, guess what? You're not going to go do <laughs> some outreach right here. You might do outreach with target Perhaps. target representatives right oh let me get my product inside these big stores right and then you start calling stores it's different uh, but mean, i think a great example of that is our dear friend tony shout out to tony uh he he had a similar thing he had a product that he was trying to sell um in one on like two one-on-ones mm -hmm. and he was doing his album he was mixing it with a podcast kind of like what we do and he was not getting enough traction and we're like okay change a little bit of perspective the album yeah. has to have a different target and for him was agency owners that serve hundreds and hundreds of websites and within yeah. two conversations he landed an awesome deal yeah i mean exactly that again outbound should be part of the strategy and this is the challenge and this is uh the the issue that we found recently right after honestly 
a bunch of years being in the funnel land community which we absolutely love we love you funnel land and obviously we're gonna go to all the events and we're gonna still connecting with everybody <laughs> and we're gonna still gonna have our funnels don't get me wrong but we're definitely gonna put way more of our effort and our attention into outbound yeah because it's a more proactive strategy to actually get clients in it requires less steps it requires honestly less a skill because you don't need any tech skill all you're doing is messaging people and finding out if they have a problem yeah. that you can solve so you are shortening that path to cash what you were talking about right yeah um going back full circle right the something that we mentioned at the very, very beginning of the episode really depends where your business is at right like if you have a business that is killing it in outbound and and you guys have that process down and you haven't experienced funnels Maybe funnels is something that you might want to test with different type of products, right? Um, if it's somebody that's starting up, we highly recommend maybe don't start with funnels. Maybe yeah. have something like, I mean, if you go to contentsprofit.com right now, that's a funnel, right? We have a, a free resource in there, the minimum viable content cheat sheet, uh, which is very powerful. But again, yeah. like you have to identify those places where you can put those. In. I remember- yeah. uh, Let me ask something here real quick. There's two main resources that you have to grow your business, which is money and time, right? Of course, when you get labor inside of your of your business, you're adding kind of you're stacking like time of other people that you can leverage, right? Well, let's say money and time, 24 hours. For funnels, something that we kind of like discover along the way, which is not that talk about as much, and it's a big issue, is for traffic. Guess what? You need money. <laughs> right you need money to drive traffic is there a way to do it with time absolutely but it requires a big investment of time building certain relationships putting on campaigns right and those campaigns might not pan out as well as you want to right sure cash traffic ads that might not bring in as many people as you as you, as you want to as well but i think is is more manageable because you see the numbers in a more clear way now if I dedicate my time to drive traffic to my funnel in the sense of putting on campaigns, right? Doing, um, what are these? I forgot the name. Kind of like these this groups. <laughs> we got we to gotta guess right here. Um, Luke, Luke is showing me his boo-boo. <laughs> right? So if you spend your time putting campaigns together, reaching out to people just to do other marketing moves, why don't you want to spend that same amount of time directly reaching out to your ideal customers that they can spend money with you, yeah. right? And, and, and when I see that now, the answer is very clear. I want to spend my time reaching out to the people that I can potentially help and shortening that path instead yeah. of, oh, let's put this summit together and then we got to write 20,000 emails <laughs> and 20,000 posts and then we're going to get all these people in here. And sure, that can pan out and that can give you a good spike on your revenue. But at the end of the day, then you're going to have to do it all over again, right? Here, here's a very quick example maybe on how people can try this out, right? If you have an email list, a significant email list, you could potentially try. If you haven't tried funnels, you can build it and send your email list to that funnel and see what happens, right? But you already spent the time building that email list, right? We've, we started with zero emails, right? <laughs> no. And I don't think we have a significant email list yet either. So that's why we rely on this on these methods, which by the way, uh, full disclosure, the show has been an album method for us to bring people in. It's a very high quality album method because mm -hmm. of the, the value that we provide with the show. But also we've been testing those pipelines, right? And, um, and again, I think like this morning I was checking it. Um, it was 100, 120 people, new people contacted. This is not like total contacts. There's a few in there. $12,000 closed. It's pretty good. Right? Pretty good if you tell me, my friend. Yeah. And again, like one of those is a three month contract uh, that could potentially be more. So that's in there. Yeah. But and, anyways, and we understand those are not like huge, massive life saving and life changing numbers. But when you do that repeatedly, repeatedly, right? Like we we said the example at the beginning. Yeah. These people are doing a hunt, at least a hundred outreach per person that they have in the like sales people that they have in their yeah. company. A hundred outreach per day. And comparable, it, this test is thirty minutes a day, at least twenty mm -hmm. contacts every single day, minimum, right? So again, it's something that's doable 
Also, we do sell a product uh, that's a little bit higher ticket. It's not like a hundred dollar product, but again, is going back to who's that person that you help. So all these elements come together, but I think the outbound strategy or the outbound theory is very powerful. So I highly encourage, or we highly encourage you to give it a try, right? And uh, if you want to attach it to the podcast, let us know. Yeah. And if you have questions, if you have some beliefs that you feel you need to move past those to start executing on this, let us know. Yeah. I still deal with those beliefs, right? I am (laughs) between my brother and I, full, full transparency. I'm the one that does the way least amount of outreach and also I feel like I'm the one that like stops myself more from doing it because of course we we got that we have that belief ingrained that reaching out to people and bothering them um you're just being sketchy at the end of the day right but guess that but guess what you are not because you have something that can help them move forward and solve their problems so you're not bothering them you're actually helping them so yes, we challenge you start doing outbound outreach. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, full disclosure, funnels are awesome. Uh, we're definitely gonna go back to that eventually on a more uh, with a more more strength, right? With more power. But before we do that, also when think, we have the products that are relevant for a funnel, right? exactly, exactly. But but I'm saying before we do that, I think we want to get to. A certain point yeah. in our business before we did it, we decide to invest X amount in building those funnels and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I feel like we weren't all over the place today, but, uh, it, but sol- I still solid episode. But I, st- I still feel it was good. This was good. Yeah, that was fun. This Let was us really know. Good. Did you enjoy this episode? <laughs> Did I? I had something I wanted to share, and I completely forgot. It was like that was so good. Um, anyways. For we'll, the next episode. Yeah, we'll figure it out for the next one. All right, guys. With that said, thank you so much for tuning into the Content Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platform and at Base Bros Co. That is right. And if today's episode helped you move one step forward towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode with three friends and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>